if you're ready. When I got myself into that position in the park, I started making so much money dealing five dollar bags and quarter ounces and dimes of hash that there was no way I could even think of spending it. I didn't have, I didn't want to own property, I didn't want to buy a car, and it was just piling up in my pocket. And I was taking four and five people out to steakhouses every night, and I'd still end up with more money at the end of the day. And what I would do, of course, it was in fives and tens. Every time it got to be about a thick $300 pile, I'd change it into hundreds. Then I'd build up some more money and change that into hundreds. Finally, I had about three grand in my pocket, and I'm living high, and I picked up this hooker, and uh, she ripped me off with the whole thing. So now, not only do I lose the cash, which I really didn't need, but I lost my capital. I had no money to buy pounds and get cheap prices. So I had to start all the way back again and getting fronts and this and that and building myself up. Then I did the body carry and uh, after the body carry what's, and I was... What's that? What? What's that? The, the body, body carry is that first smoke. Oh, oh the right, Where I packed myself in with 12 pounds. Then after I did that and I realized I am now a smuggler, I'm not even a dealer anymore. I have no reason to, I can make $8,000 in one day. What do I want to hang around the park for? Uh, so, but I decided that I, rather than do it again, I would hire somebody to do the walkthrough with the body carry, give them 2000 for their day's work, and, and a trip to Europe, and I would keep 6000 and not have to do anything. So I was introduced to the word mule. And I did that for a while. And then I hooked up with these other two people, the captain and the sheriff. The captain was a hell of a blackguard. He was an Irishman, red flaming hair, got a great sense of humor and stayed in trouble. And he was down in uh, St. Thomas. And anyway, I'll get back to before I even met him, uh, I, I realized I'm a smuggler. So I sent a few people as mules. Then I meet these other two people, uh, the sheriff, and he's doing a similar thing to me because I graduated from mules because I said, why should I risk a body of a human being when I can mail it back? In those days, anything under 10 pounds didn't go through customs because what they were looking for was electronics. There were no drug problem. So I could send back the uh, three pounds at a time in cheeses that came in crocs. I'll show you one. Good old Fortnum and Mason bought at Harrods. And it had cheese in it up to there. And then it had a top which was hermetically sealed. So what I would do is I'd melt three pounds of hash till it was not melted, but soften it, fill up this with hash, except for the, and then I'd seal it. Then the last inch, because these only one kind of cheese comes in this, English blue Stilton. It's an awful cheese. But the last quarter inch would be cheese. There's some case they opened it, which they never did. Then I'd put the top back on, then I'd seal it again, and then we'd send these things through. Because with everything, the packaging, this crock, and the cheese, it weighed eight and three quarter pounds. So it never got opened. So we'd send, we had answering services. In those days, a place answered your phone for you, and then you called in and got your messages from a human being. There was no recording devices. So uh, I, I found out by accident when I went to pay my bill that they also received packages. So we started sending these cheeses a dozen at a time 
to several different answering services. I go into Fortin and Mason one day, because I hated this cheese. And I said, haven't you got any other kind of cheese that comes in a crock besides English, Blue Stilton, and the guy, the, the guy in Harrods, full butler uniform, goes, no, we haven't, sir. Just English Blue Stilton. So I said, I really hate that cheese, so you better give me a dozen crocks. <laughs> And then we sent them through that way for a while. Then I meet the sheriff, and uh, he's over there doing a similar thing, and we decided we can do it more and easy. We'll start building it into furniture. So we hired a carpenter, and he would build little kitties and different furnitures, and we started creating artworks and building it into the artwork. The artwork had to be destroyed to get it open. There were no x-ray machines, there were no dogs, there was no war on drugs. You just sent it through with like any million other uh, items that come from. So we would send art objects and the demand kept increasing and the art objects could only hold 25 pounds and we sent through a Jaguar with 300 pounds and a speedboat a regular full-size speedboat um, with uh, 400 pounds stashed into the panels of the boat and uh, it just kept growing and growing and growing just like the park thing did. I made an error at this point in my career. Instead of staying with something that worked, I started wanting to go to other countries and do, and, and enjoy the country and smuggle. But I never found anything that worked as good. So it was from then on in, it was some things worked, some things didn't. But I could I, what I should have done with my whole career when I found a good spot was stay there for a while, at least until I amassed enough more money than barely enough to take the next step. I was the kind of a person who, if I had barely enough to take the next step, or even if I had to borrow, I'd do it. And that's not the way to run a business, but I wasn't really running a business. I was just fucking around and things were working out.